What has happened to me? The Testimony of an Uzbek Woman By Tomomi Shimizu I'm 53, an Uzbek. Born and raised in Uyghur Autonomous Region. Married to an Uyghur man. I used to teach Chinese to children in elementary school as a teacher. In 1993, I delivered a daughter. I was so happy. One year later, I had a second baby. But when I was five months pregnant, the authorities discovered it and forced me to abort. The pain from the wound was severe and did not go away for a long time. I wanted to have a child, so I removed the intrauterine device that had been put in me. But every time I was pregnant, I miscarried for whatever reason, and I couldn't deliver. Since 2017, all Uyghur women aged 18 to 50 have been sent to hospital for a medical exam. They put the IUD in me again. The bleeding never stopped due to the insertion. I was hospitalized and the device was removed. But in the spring of 2019, the target of infertility treatment called a medical exam expands to 18 to 59 years old. To all women between 18 to 59 years old, if you don't want to sit in the torture chair, come to me for a medical exam on June 19th, 20th, 21st or 22nd. Think about the lives of your relatives. I was told to have tubal ligation surgery. I'm already 50 years old. I don't need it. Are you going to the police? If you refuse, your family will be tortured and sent to a concentration camp. When I arrived at the hospital, there was a line of women from each residential district. I had to wait four hours for my turn. The surgery was executed in the basement. I was bleeding and falling unconscious when a Han Chinese female doctor handed me a sterilization certificate. I will never forget her faceless face. September 2016 I was called to a meeting of a school board in Sebag district, and told to take a job to teach illiterate people. 2017. The place I visited was a big building surrounded by a high wall on the summit of a mountain. It was surrounded by electric fence wires. The classroom was monitored by two armed police officers and several staff members, and was equipped with eight surveillance cameras. Students entered the classroom crawling like animals through the gap in the chained iron door. Most of the 100 students were men between 18 and 40 years old. There were seven women over 50 years old. All the men were sitting in small chairs with their hands and feet chained. I ended up teaching Chinese language at a concentration camp. When I was writing my self-intro on the board in my first class, I heard someone crying. They were pleading to me with their eyes. I thought my heart would stop when I found my former student. I asked him why he was here. He said the reason was because he installed an illegal app on his smartphone. When I was in the camp, I heard voices screaming. What is that? Torture. The numbers of inmates were called during class. Torture after class was a routine. I never heard of them taking a shower. Three meals a day. Same dish every time. Hard steamed bun and rice juice only. Toilets are permitted three times a day. Up to one minute per use allowed. If you do not comply, you will be punished. Those who came earlier disappear and are replaced by newcomers. The young inmates were healthy, strong, and bright when they first arrived. Soon they became sick and weak. The next location I was assigned to was a women's camp. 
more than 10,000 Uyghur women were there. On the day I arrived, I saw a woman being transported on a stretcher. Her face was completely lifeless and she was not breathing. She bled to death. That's what a female cop said. She was assigned to investigate reports of rape at the facility. I heard various stories from her. This building is six stories tall. The moment a woman is imprisoned, her hair gets shaved. No chains on hands and feet in a classroom. But chains on hands and feet in their rooms where 30 to 40 people were packed. One bucket is put in a room. The only toilet for all women in the room. Replace the bucket once every 24 hours. 90% of inmates were 18 to 40 years old and 10% were 70 to 80 years old. Every Monday they had to take an unknown drug and an injection. Torture if you refuse to obey. They put a hand in the mouth to confirm whether she swallowed. When a woman takes the drug, her period stops. But there were also women whose bleeding did not stop because of the drug. And women who were separated from their newborn babies, and some women with their breast milk coming out. As far as I know, the staff in white were all Han Chinese. On my way home from work in the car, I was with an old Chinese professor teaching law. Too harsh. The police called the detainees at the school gate, sexually assaulted them with stun batons, and raped them in groups again today. People detained here do not need to be educated to start with. I think he intended to tell me what happened by talking to the driver. At night, while drinking, the male policeman happily boasted about how they tortured and raped the female inmates. I was hospitalized and quit my job due to mental anguish. 2019. My husband and I were about to leave the country to meet our daughter in Holland. But the passport was not issued to my husband because he was Uyghur. When we were leaving home, Call Binner. Do not come back to Uyghur no matter what. Promise me you'll never come back again. Later, government officials came to my house to blackmail me as I testified from abroad, and instructed my husband on how to shoot a video to deny the wife's allegations. WeChat, the only means of communication with my husband, has been blocked. My dear husband, we've been together all along. You sent me away. Is my husband alive now? Or is he dead? I do not know. Horrible torture and sexual violence are going on in the camps. The same holds for outside the camp. A family system that enables the Han Chinese to live in Uyghur houses. Marriage to Han Chinese. Transportation to a distant factory. Uyghurs will be wiped out in the near future. I hereby testify. My name is Kalbiner Siddiq. Please. I am determined to spend the rest of my life testifying to the various scenes and cruel realities that I have witnessed. Please. Everyone, any method is fine. Please make my voice heard. Please make as many people as possible aware of what's going on in Uyghur.